Good morning. How are y'all? I'm glad you have chosen to be in the house of the Lord this morning uh, to worship. And for those of you who are joining us um, on the internet, thank you for being here. Uh, I, I'm obviously not Reverend Becky. Uh, she was supposed to go to Ecuador and be on the mission trip. She um, was unable to go because her husband Richard is having a few health issues that they're trying to figure out. So she is in town, but she's not here today. Um, she's staying with him. So just wanted to let you know that. I do ask you to continue to lift up the Ecuador team in your prayers. Uh, they are, if you're on Facebook, you can see what they're doing. They're doing great things. And we just want to continue to pray for their safety and um, for, for their work. And there's also a new issue of the connection out. Uh, so please read it to find out any other things that are going on. And now if you would rise and join me in the call to worship printed in your bulletin. Blessed are those who do not walk in the counsel of the wicked, or stand in the way of sinners, or sit in the seat of scoffers, but their delight is in the law of the Lord, and on God's law they meditate day and night. They are like trees planted by streams of water that yield fruit in their season, and, and their light leaves do not wither. In all they do, they prosper.
may be seated. And let us go to the Lord in prayer. Loving God, thank you so much for caring for us and about us and letting us experience the beauty of your creation. Thank you for inviting us into relationship with you. Help our roots in you grow strong and deep so that they may sustain us during tough times and let our roots in you never wither. And now with the confidence of the children of God, let us pray the prayer Jesus taught his first disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
And now I would like to invite the children to come up and join the Susan for Children's Moments. I'm so happy the mic is working. God is good all the time, right, Austin? And if there's one positive thing to be said about COVID, I have saved a ton of money on lipstick. That's the only positive. Hey, Izzy, how are you? I'm so glad you're here with me today. I brought in two things. I picked this out of my yard this morning, and it sort of wilted a little bit. But I want to talk to you about roots. Do you know what a root is? Okay, well, I'm going to tell you very briefly because I only have five minutes. A root is something that grows in the ground, starts in the ground, and it helps flowers to grow. That's the root. See right here, that bottom part? That's the root. Now, you don't see it all the time in the ground because it's getting all kind of nourishment from the dirt and from rain and from sunshine. So that's just a tiny little root. Now, look at this picture. Those are some really big trees, aren't they? Now, do you think they have a root like that, or do you think they have really, really big, long roots? It just hazard a guess. I'll give you a hint. They have really, really deep roots in the ground, and you can't see them. Just like with this, you can't see that root either. But... Roots are very important for plants to grow, for trees and vegetables and flowers and even weeds, which we all have, but they have roots too. So what I want to know is, have you ever heard of being rooted in Jesus? You haven't. I know you haven't because that's kind of a really, really adult thing and it takes a while to get there. But let me tell you what it means. It means that we need to have very strong roots in Jesus. We need to believe in Jesus and read our Bibles and pray and come to Sunday school like you did today. And we also need to listen to stories about Jesus. And that will help us to have strong roots with Jesus. And that's what we want to do. Because when we have strong roots with Jesus, we are really loved and we can love other people like Jesus wants us to do. Okay? So when you hear the word root, don't think of something that happens in the low country as a curse that somebody's going to put on you. Think of... I was supposed to get a laugh out of that, and I didn't. Thank you. Think of even this little root or these big, strong roots, and we want to be really strong and rooted in Jesus, okay? You want to bow your heads and say a prayer with me? You don't? Well, can I say one? Okay, well, bow your head. Dear God, thank you for helping us to be rooted in Jesus. Help us to learn and to love and to pray. Amen. Thank you, Susan. And now I'd like to ask Ed McLean to come up for ministry moment. Good morning, members and friends of Washington Street. When Mary Raggio died in January 2003, she left Washington Street United Methodist Church a generous bequest to create periodic video summaries of the missions and ministries of her and our beloved church. Mary and her first husband, Stuart Easterby, joined Washington Street in June 1946. Stuart died six years later in 1952. And in 1961, Mary married again, this time to Stuart, I'm sorry, to Lawrence Raggio. 
In one of our earlier reports, we interviewed church members who had known Mary. The first report was completed and shown in 2005, and we produced a new one every year until 2009, when we started creating reports every two years. Two earlier editions of the Raggio Report have been awarded the Herbert Hux Jr. Award for Historical Preservation and Interpretation from the South Carolina Annual Conference Commission on Archives and History. Today, at 2 o'clock p.m., we will premiere the 11th edition of the Raggio Report on the church's YouTube channel, provided that our technology works like we expect. <laughs> Go to youtube.com and search for Washington Street UMC. Let me also say there is an earlier version out there, but the dates on it are 2017 and 2018. If you haven't seen it, you can. If you have and can't find the tooth, tooth, this one, you've got the wrong one. Uh, the new report documents how Washington Street has responded to the COVID-19 pandemic. If you've seen previous reports, you'll notice that this one is different. It's in documentary style. There is no narrator. And it's the longest Raggio report we've ever produced. I would direct you for more information to the article on the front of Connection, a well done piece by our, one of our committee members. If watching the Raggio report on YouTube is not convenient for you, we would be glad to come to your Sunday school class and we'll be scheduling showings on other Sundays before and after worship. We'll also work with Jane Peterson to give you a direct link to the report in communications from the church later this week. Current members of the Raggio Report Committee are Eleanor Langley, Christine Haight, Reverend Becky Shirley, and yours truly. Each video has been produced, edited, and narrated by our talented and creative committee members. All of the photos and videos used in each Raggio report have been taken by church members and staff. If you would be interested in, if you are interested in history and would be interested in working with our committee, please let Reverend Shirley or me know. In closing, we again remember the benevolence of Mary Raggio and her wish for us to create a periodic summary of our church's ministries, mission activities, and other events. Thank you. Thank you, Ed, and I do encourage all of you to watch the Raggio Report. And now I would like to invite the ushers to come forth as we give to God God's tithes and our offerings.
And now if you will join me as we affirm our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead and ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. be seated. Our scripture lesson today comes from Paul's letter to the church at Colossae, verses 6 through 10 out of chapter 2. Hear now the word of the Lord. And now, just as you accepted Christ Jesus as your Lord, you must continue to live in obedience to him. Let your roots grow down into him and draw up nourishment from him, so you will grow in faith, strong and vigorous in the truth you were taught. Let your lives overflow with thanksgiving for all he has done. Don't let anyone lead you astray with empty philosophy and high-sounding nonsense that comes from human thinking and from evil powers of this world and not from Christ. For in Christ, the fullness of God lives in a human body and you are complete through your union with Christ. He is the Lord over every ruler and authority in the universe. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be pleasing to you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Over 20 years ago, when I was fairly newly living in my current house, uh, my husband at the time and I decided to plant two palmetto trees on either side of our front steps. So we went to the nursery and picked them out and had them delivered. And then we, well actually before the truck got there, we dug big deep holes. We filled it with fertilizer, used good topsoil, put those trees in there and then watered them religiously until they took hold. Those trees are now over 20 years old. They have grown far taller than I thought. In fact, they're starting to obscure the view from my second story windows. But they are rooted strong and deep in my front yard. In those 20 years, they have survived droughts. They've survived the great flood of 2015. They've survived ice storms, snow, and anything else that seemed to happen over those two decades. And they have survived all that because they have a good root system. They are firmly rooted into those spots and they can get what they need from the soil so that they can survive almost anything, good or bad. It's their roots that hold them in place and make them stable 
as well as providing the nutrients they need. We are like those palmetto trees. We have roots. We have roots in our family, in our community, probably even in our workplace. All these roots provide stability and help us grow because they link us to others and provide us with nourishment, the love and support we need to thrive. However, the most important roots we have, the most important roots we sink into the ground are the roots the Apostle Paul talked about, the roots we have in Jesus Christ. When we love Jesus Christ, we put our roots into divine soil, which gives our souls sustenance. The more we get to know Jesus, the closer we grow to the divine, the deeper our roots grow, and the more we grow in our faith. So every time we read the Bible, every time we come to worship, every time we go to Sunday school or some other small group, even every time we just talk about our faith or what we heard at church, our roots get stronger and deeper because we are strengthening our relationship with the Lord. And these deep roots allow us to draw our nourishment from Christ and give us the ability to stand strong and remain grounded during the destabilizing storms of life. Thus, we need to prioritize our relationship with Christ because our connection to the Lord enables us to hold on to our faith during hard times and gives us the strength we won't have by ourselves. We live in a crazy world, and we don't know what's coming next. But we can prepare ourselves for an uncertain future by having good, deep roots in Christ. Now Paul in this letter warns the believers in that church to watch out for other beliefs and philosophies that compete with God's truth for our attention and our allegiance. They are false because they are of human origin and focus on power or control, not on love. Paul warns that these philosophies take us away, lure us away many times, from God's truth and keep us from being fully rooted in Christ. Now, there are lots of things that compete for our allegiance, but I'm only going to mention two of them this morning because, to me, they're the most treacherous ones. First, there's the idea that we should each just do what's best for us. That if it's good for me, and it shouldn't matter to you, and you shouldn't try to stop me in whatever I'm doing. That, my friends, is false teaching. It isn't biblical. God prioritizes relationship. We see this in the Trinity, where God is in relationship with God's self. In addition, God created us to be in relationship with the divine and also with each other. When we try to go it alone, we are operating counter to God's will for us and for the world. So these ideas that try to separate each of us into independent beings with no need for anyone else are not of God and are actually detrimental to us. As Reverend Becky said a few weeks ago, we are all interdependent. We are all linked. And we need to recognize that and live in to that truth. Another false ideology that is even more insidious because is, is even more insidious because it misuses the Bible and twists God's words. It purports to be religious and pious, but it's not. The people who avows, 
who espouse these views lift passages out of the Bible, taking them out of context, and using them to push a human agenda. We have seen these actions in the past with people using scripture passages to prove that God condones slavery. We are seeing people doing the same thing today to justify their own agendas. They claim to want certain policies because that is what God would want. However, what they are doing isn't pious or faithful. It's about gaining power and control. These people use scripture to portray God as vengeful, judgmental, and punitive. My friends, yes, there are passages in the Bible that sound like that. Uh, but they are by no means the sum of what is in the Bible. The Bible is really a love letter from God to humanity. And the Bible's overall message is one of love, grace, and mercy. That's the most complete and accurate view of God we have. But don't just take my word for it. Read the Bible for yourselves you will find that our best representation of the Word of God is the person of Jesus Christ. It's not the words in this book. As the Gospel of John tells us, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God and the Word became flesh and lived among us. God became incarnate in Jesus Christ, willingly humbling God's self, because God wanted us to truly see and understand the extent of divine love and to see what God's heart is about, what God cares about. Jesus Christ is God in the flesh who came to show us that. And so when we want to know what God really thinks and does, we can read the Gospels and see what Jesus said and how Jesus acted. So when people cherry pick verses out of the Bible to show divine favor for one cause or another, we need to compare what they are saying about God to what Jesus Christ said and did while he lived. If the words of people are in opposition to what Jesus said and how Jesus lived, then they are not Christ-like and they are not the truth. My friends, we need to be rooted and firmly attached to Jesus Christ so that we are, when we are confronted by these false and misleading beliefs, we recognize that they are not true. Let us be nourished by the truth of Christ, which assures us that God loves us and all of humanity, and that God wants a relationship with each of us. Being able to recognize God's truth and not be misled by false beliefs is why it's so important to read and study the Bible and to have safe places where we can delve into what we've read and really begin to internalize those ideas. It's how we get to know God and how we sink our roots into the soil of God's love. Friends, what I want for all of us is to have the type of relationship with the Lord where our roots go down deep, so deep that nothing, not the approach of death, not the diagnosis of cancer, not the loss of a job, nothing can destroy our relationship with the Lord. When we've got that type of relationship with God, we are able to withstand anything that comes our way because we know that God will be with us as we go through it. 
I am blessed to have had people in my family that modeled this type of relationship with God to me in my formative years. And I am blessed currently with friends and with members of this congregation who model that type of faith for me now. Y'all live it out. And I want this type of vital relationship with the Lord for everybody because it changes your life and allows you to live from a place of peace and security, even when the world is not peaceful or secure. Because we know that we are loved by God and that God is with us no matter what. When we have deep roots in Christ, we will want to love others because we are so thankful for the love that God lavishes on us. This love becomes not just a feeling, but an action. As we move from intellectually knowing about God to having a relationship with God, we will live differently. We will respond to God's love with a love of our own. We will love God, we will love ourselves, and we will love our neighbor, which includes everybody else. When we do that, we are acting like Jesus. We are being Christ-like. And as we begin acting more Christ-like, we will begin to see, even if it's dim and fuzzy, a bit of heaven here on earth. This is what being rooted in Christ does for us. It changes us and it changes the world. That's no less important today than it was in Paul's day. In a world where nothing is certain and there are new crises to face every day, having deep roots in Christ nourishes us and stabilizes us and allows us to stand tall and strong and live out our lives from a place of love and inclusion. Thanks be to God.
Now, go in peace, knowing that God loves you, wants a relationship with you, and is ready for you to sink your roots deep into God's love. Amen. Thank you.